we will uh, we will talk about business plan <coughs> Now, so we have an idea, so it's an era of, so let me welcome you to the era of actually startups and entrepreneurs. So everybody has an idea and everybody feels that he or she can, you know, have a billion dollar company with that idea. Right. But the point is, you have an idea and what exactly are you supposed to do with that idea? You need to finally transform that idea into a product and service. Now how to do that? To transform an idea into a product and service, you need money. Yes. So you have some. So that's not sufficient. Yes. How, do, how, do, how will you get the money? Or um, from where will you get the money? Investors. <laughs> Investors. Now the question is, why will they give their hard-earned money to you to simply spend? Because you'll be spending. Yes. We go and spending is the easiest thing on earth. Yes, sir. And that too, when you have to spend somebody else's money. <coughs> so why will an investor who has saved his money will give it to you to simply spend it? Because our idea will be. Because of the idea we have. There are n number of ideas floating in and around. And number of good ideas are getting, you know, not if the ideas are not well executed, everything is getting lost. Everybody has an idea. What it takes to generate an idea? You need to think. You need to use your brain. The more you think, you can find a problem, you can have an idea. But then at the end, if you cannot transform idea into a product or service, the idea is gone. And the money is lost if it is not planned. So the point is, if you need somebody's hard-earned saved money to simply spend, to simply spend, the investor will look at something. The investor need to convince himself or herself that the idea makes sense and the guy has the future plans as well. Now how will they know? They look at a business plan and that is where the relevance of a business plan is. That is where the relevance of a business plan is. You have an idea, you don't have a business plan. Everybody has an idea. The idea is not going to, you know, I mean, gone are the days when ideas will fetch funds for you. You know, gone are the days. Everybody has an idea. You need to know how to transform that idea into a product service. You know, you need to know who are your target customers. You need to know how to sell them. You need to know how to operationalize it. And you need to know how to convert or how to acquire customers. Unless and until you know, unless and until you have that foresight, that idea is not going to work. Now, the business plan is something that, you know, the investor will look, will try to understand, and then, and then will try to make a decision. Fine. Now, many a times we are confused how to start. How to, you know, how to write a business plan or how to start pitching. So the best thing is ask a question, throw a problem and then introduce yourself. So let me ask you a question. How many of you feel, so say for example when you get jobs, you'll be you know, fanned, across, fanned across India. You'll be not staying in Patna. And most of your parents are in Patna. So if you fan across Patna and you have an old age parent, you want to take care of them, but then you don't, you know, you cannot because you are in Bangalore. And say for example they fall sick. How many of you bothered about this kind of a situation? Everyone. Everyone. So this is so this leads to a problem. What is the problem? Problem is there is an old people who are alone, the kids are far away, the kids want to take care of them, but they don't know how to take care of these people. And then there is a company, Porti, that does that. So the problem is taking care of old age people. Porti comes up with a solution saying that there is an available 
facility of booking online nurses. So if you're not well, you can book a nurse. Nurse will come, she'll do everything. And what is the benefit? You are rest assured everything is fine. So you have a problem? You have a solution. So start with the question, problem, and then introduce yourself, I mean, introduce everything else. So problem I have identified. I have thrown the question, I have showed you the problem, and the, the need is compelling. Everybody requires that, everybody needs that. Fine. And that's the main point. So once you have identified a problem, problem is identified, but do not jump onto product straight away. Once the problem is identified, then you need to showcase the opportunity. Fine. Once the problem is identified, you know there is a problem, you have a solution, but don't always jump onto the product. First, the second step is you introduce the opportunities to the investors. Now the problem, if I convert, if I provide a solution for that problem, what opportunities are available? So what is the growth prospects? What is the, the TAM, you heard about TAM Samsung? Yes, Total available market, total serviceable available market and serviceable obtainable market. Now you cannot simply say that this is a problem and if I will be able to serve each and every one on this earth. That's not possible. So there will be a total available market. You need to identify the serviceable available market and then you need to identify what will be your serviceable obtainable market. Because you cannot provide the service to everyone and not everybody will need that service. And for that, you need to do primary research. You know, you need to do primary research. Unless and until you do the primary research, you perform the primary research, you will not understand. There is a problem, but then how many of the Indians really need that? It can go other way around in India. In Western countries, it can be a different thing, but in India, it can go other way around. The old age people might think that this can, you know, become a trend, and then, you know, the kids will stay you know, far away and then there will be a nurse taking care of them. So you need to do a pilot survey the, of the people who need this product, who need this service. So whether they really need this or not. And when, once you do the survey, you will be able to know that which income class is basically looking for this product. Fine. And this problem will not be confined to only old age people. Initially your positioning is old age. But then this can be a problem to anyone. You are staying in Bangalore, you are alone. You are falling sick, what will you do? You need a service. So that can be further extended as well. <coughs> Fine. So, once the problem is identified, we need to showcase the opportunity. Unless and until the opportunity set is shown to the investors, you know, they will not, the, the into will not come. Fine. And then, this is, if this is the only business, fine. But this, may not be the only business. There are other existing you know, units or companies who are doing the same activity. If they are available, what is the trend? How are they working? What are they doing? And how you are better than them? Fine. Pistol analysis. All of us understand pistol. Why we need to know? Because you will be offering service in a you know, confined setup. So say for example, you will be offering this services or products in India. So if you are offering this service and product in India, you need to understand the entire you know, political system. You need to understand how the economy is performing. You need to understand the social setup. Because this is a problem which will be solving some social you know, issues are concerned with that. So you need to understand the social setup. You need to understand what technologies will be used, environment and the legal framework. Fine. And primary research is not doing anywhere. Because that is something that will give you insights which you haven't even thought of. Because we know that this is something everybody will need, but when you do the primary survey, those people are giving different you know, inputs. And that may you know, give you insight which will help you change the entire plan of action. And that's where primary research is important. And investors, whenever you go and pitch the business plan, they will ask you whether you have done the primary survey or not. Because they would also like to know that apart from idea, what else have you done? Because idea in itself is not sufficient. Have you started working on that? What have you done? 
once the problem is identified, once the opportunity has been showcased, now come to the product. Now imagine a situation when there when there were no umbrellas. So this is the feature. Now what is the feature? There is a cloth which is very unique, which will save you from rays. It is unbreakable. It has a wooden stick which is automatic. So that's a feature. What is the benefit that you get? Protection, protection from heat, from protection, protection from rain. rain. That is the only thing umbrella, two things umbrella does. So any product that you pitch in, any product that you offer, you need to do the problem, feature and benefit analysis. So PFP analysis needs to be done. And this is problem, feature and benefit analysis. You see the company, Ola. What was the problem? Root behavior of driving. Yes. You know, we very often face this. Uh, you used to face if you are even now if you use you know X Y Z taxis, you see the behaviors of you know those drivers, and most of the drivers in Ola now the behavior has improved. Still, you will find some problem, but then to an extent yes improved. But the problem was root behavior. How they solve that? Through ratings. You know, be good behavior you give five, bad behavior you give one. So that's the problem is root behavior. How the, how Ola solved it through ratings. And what is the benefit? The benefit the customer gets, the humbleness, and the driver will greet you when you board in and when you drop. Yes or no? Yes, sir. The so, 4T, which I was talking about. The problem was no help available in emergency for old people. That's a problem. What is the feature? Online nurse booking. So old people, you are not well, nobody is there with you. You can book an online nurse. She will come or he will come and he or she will take care of you. Fine. What is the benefit? Rest assured. The kids who are sponsoring, you rest assured everything is fine. Fine. Same thing with Big Basket. You know, most of the time you go, you bargain and you, you, know, you don't feel good. That consumes time, that consumes energy. That was a problem. What is the feature? They started doorstep delivery. You don't have to go. You don't have to, don't have to go for you know, the groceries. You don't, don't have to go for vegetables. Rather, you don't have to go for any FMCG item. And what is the benefit to the customers? You save time and energy. So, any idea that you have need to be then translated into PFB analysis. You need to clearly understand what is the problem what features your product will bring in and what benefit the customers will get. Because your clarity will, you know, will ensure investors that if I invest in this particular startup, actually they clear what is the problem, what feature they are going to bring and what benefit the customers will get. Okay. And then once you have, you know, so we have introduced the problem, problems first, then showcase the opportunities, talk about the product, talk about the problem, benefit and feature analysis, PFB, and then talk about your company, talk about the MVV, talk about mission, vision and values. Though, you know, sometimes people will say that this is not that important, but then when you show this mission, vision and statements, that in a way shows, you know, these, the, the, the founders' short-sightedness and foresightedness. So how foresighted you are. It's not that you just have an idea. You are also thinking about the future. You know that where you want to take this company. Unless and until you have the mission, you have the vision, and you have the value system, you know, you cannot take it to the next level. So showing this has a different meaning. It's not about what mission, vision, and values you have. It's about whether you are foresighted or not. So you need to be foresighted. And most of the businesses, I mean, people coming, people are coming with the ideas and they are so obsessed, fascinated with the ideas that I have an idea, this is a billion dollar idea. Now, give me the money, I will hire somebody to do all management activities. And let me tell you, 10 to 15 percent of these startups fail, you know, because of the management issues. The mission, vision and value analysis will basically you know, show your foresightedness to the industry and that's a good sign. Once you have done that, 
once we have introduced the company briefly with regard to mission, vision and values, come to the stages of development because the investors will also like to know that till now what, apart from generation of idea, what else have you done? Apart from generation of idea, what else have you done? So whether you have the prototype ready, whether you have the minimum viable product, you, minimum viable product, you understand minimum viable product? Beta version, huh? yes, a product yes, with minimum features that is in a way sufficient to attract the attention of customers. So whether you have the prototype ready, if not, I mean it's just an idea. They will say, go work for one year, then please come back again. It was just an idea. Unless and until you have a prototype, you don't know whether that idea is going to really work or not. Okay? Pilot testing. You have a prototype, prototype whether you have done the pilot testing of that. Because sometimes you create a pro prototype and then when you do the pilot testing, a lot of issues will come. Okay? Company registration, whether you have registered the company or not. No, I have an idea, I have not registered the company, I'll do it later because I know this is a billion dollar idea. You need to give me the fund. That's, it's not going to work in that way. You need to do all the basics first. If the idea is there, if you know the mission vision, if you're focused, if the product is clear, if the PFB is clear, get the company registered. And if the product is such that it requires, or service is such that it requires IP, the IP need to be filed the intellectual property, you know, the IP need to be filed, whether it is filed or not. If it is not, file it again. Because once you are pitching, now it is public. If it is public, somebody else can, you know, file the IP for that. So if it is IP based, whether the IP is filed or not. Stage of development, they would further like to know what is the traction. You know, there is a problem, you have identified a problem. You know what is the solution. You have done the primary survey. You have registered the company, whether people are visiting your site, whether people are querying about their product or service, how many registered users do you have, how many repeat users do you have, whether they have given any sort of feedback, what feedback have you got, positive, negative, anything else that can change your plan and then what is the quarterly growth percentage in the number of users or revenue. Initially, you will not have revenue, so bother about only users. What is the quarterly growth in users? Where the traction is improving, where the traction is going down. So that makes sense to the investors. And when you talk about stages of development and traction, also talk about the future timeline here itself, which will again showcase your foresight net towards the business, wherein you talk about new product lines. Because you cannot just start with an idea, with one product and then continue with that one single product for an infinite period. There will be a hell lot of competition. Nowadays most of the startups, if I talk about OT, this is a tech based startup. Now tech based startup, what is the entry barrier? There is no entry barrier. Anybody, you can start a OT. Fine, so competition is intense. So. You cannot stick with only one product. What are your plans? What new product lines you'll be developing? <laughs> Who, what new markets, what new target customers you are looking at? Or which kind of customers you will be approaching in near future? What partnership associations, associations you'll be doing? And what alternate revenue streams you'll be generating? That is very important. You cannot start with one idea, one product and then continue for an infinite period, then you know that the competition is intense. That's not going to work. So you need to have a future plan ready, and once you show this, they'll know that you have the foresight, and you have everything what a startup or entrepreneur needs to have inside. Okay. Once the stages of development done, now talk about competition. So we'll do it fast, fine? With the time constraint. So competition analysis. You cannot say that your idea is unique and there are no competitors available. You need to search, you need to do your research, search and research. You will find, if not exact, you will find some far near you know, competitors available. When the e-commerce industry came up, there, were, there was no perfect competitors. But then the retailers were the competitors. 
So you need to identify who are the competitors. If not exact, who are the funnier competitors. And once you have the competitors, you need to know what competitive advantage you have. What kind of innovations are you doing in that product and service? What kind of technologies are you using? Fine. And to perform the competition analysis, you can use the framework. So you can have your company and then you can have your competitors, the most near comparables. Okay? And then you compare them based on certain parameters. Based on so you can have a competitive advantage based on some firm specific variables which you are very strong at. You can be you know, you can have a competitive edge based on what kind of target customers you are targeting. So if we talk about Poti, I mean, not many companies are there who are taking care of, you know, the needs of such, such needs are not taken care of that age group. Fine. And then based on what, if you have any product specific advantages, you know, what technology have you used to develop the product. Fine. And then how have you positioned the product. And apart from that, you can use these other factors also to do the competition competition analysis. So you, it should not be this elaborate. You can use six to seven factors to do the competition analysis based on quality, based on service, reliability, stability, expertise, and so on and so forth. So use six, seven parameters, and based on that, try to identify where is your competitive edge. Because investors sitting there would like to know that what competitive edge you have vis-a-vis the other companies. Okay. We have done everything, 70% done, but unless and until you have a marketing and sales plan, nothing is going to work. At the end, the product needs to be sold in the market, service needs to be sold in the market. Yes or no? 70% yes, we are through, but then marketing sales plan is required. So you need to have a clear, defined marketing strategy. Who will be your target market? What pricing strategies you will adopt? What product service development strategies you will adopt? and how you will advertise, promote, and what digital marketing tools you will be using. You, you should be very clear about that. You cannot say that, I'll be using everything. I'll use the hoardings, I'll use the billboards, I'll use television ads, I'll, I'll you know, rope in Deepika, Padukone, and so on and so forth. You cannot say that. Because investors, they are the one they know, you will be using my money and spending there. Ah, you will be using investors' money and you will be spending on you know, those ads. So the marketing strategies need to be efficiently drafted so that with minimum cost, the advantage is maximized. You cannot just do anything. Fine. And that's, where, that, that's the reason I'm saying it's strategy. So you need to have a well-drafted marketing strategy. You have, a, you have drafted a marketing strategy. Everything is fine. You need to have a sales plan because at the end, you need to sell the product. Marketing, you are trying to make people aware about the product. But unless and until you have a sales plan, how will people buy your product? Where will the people buy your product from? How the retailers will get your product? So you need to have a sales channel strategy, you need to have a distribution strategy, because those are going to define what will be for your overall revenue. Getting a point? So marketing strategy, sales strategy, very important. 70% we are done previously. But then unless and until you have a marketing and sales plan, you're not going to sell your product. And investors are interested in you know, how much revenue you will be earning in the future time periods, not in the current periods. 80% we are done. And this target market strategy, you can go through the details, fine. Whether it is B2B, B2C, okay? 80% you are done. You have a marketing strategy ready, you have a sales plan ready. Now you need to know what is your operational plan. Unless and until you know that how will you execute it, nothing is going to work. Everything, I mean, till this point, whatever you have done is nothing more than a good picture on a wall. It's a picture on a wall. You know, you have done everything. The picture, the canvas looks extremely good. But you need to operationalize it. You know what are the, you, sh you should know what are the key activities. Say for example, urban club. So when they go visit, you know, customer and providing saloon services, now what what are the what are the things 
the executive needs to know. He or she needs to be well groomed. He or she needs to know how to greet. He or she needs to know how to use the technology. Yes or no? Because they will be using that OTP. They will feed that OTP. Once it is started, there will be a timer. When you stop, you again give them OTP. So you need to know what the what are the key activities. And the key activities, if this is the process, then whether the process is automated or not. Because if service industry, if process automation is not done, I mean things are not going to work for you. Nowadays, even in manufacturing, you will find that the processes are automated. Fine. So process automation needs to be there. So for that, you need to understand what are the key activities. If the key activities require process automation, process automation needs to be there. If process is automated, accordingly the staffs need to be selected. You cannot just recruit anyone who have no idea about technology in a company which is say for example Urban Lab. You don't know how to use technology. Fine. What will you do? How will you put the OTP? If there is some glitch in the you know system at that point in time, what he will do, you don't know. So accordingly you need to you know recruit the staff. So that is your operational part. And the staff need to be trained or rather staff need to be trainable. So accordingly you need to hire the staff, you need to train them. What facilities do you need? Whether you need a warehouse, whether you need a customer care. You can need both of them, you can need either of them. Facilities need to be there. Fine. Distribution and logistics. How will you plan the logistics? If the logistics are not planned well, customers in your need your product, need your service, but then when they need, they are not getting it. After a point in time, they will get offended. So that happens in bakery business, yours. Amul, so he was doing SIP. You know, Yamul has launched bakery products. People were interested in the product, but then they were not getting the product when they need that. Maybe some, you know, logistic issues. What kind of machines do you need? In case if it is a, you know, if it is manufacturing, what kind of machines? Where will you buy that? If there is a breakdown, do you have, you know? service facilities available. If not, there is a problem. Implementation timelines. Okay, so operational aspect need to be, you know, I mean, as an investor, I would like to see that you know the operational part as well. 80% marketing done, this is 90% through. Management team. 10 Almost 10% of these startups, as per the statistics of Government of India, Ministry of Education, fail because of internal management issues. So you need to have, you know, plan your team accordingly. And when you plan your team, you need to see what relevant experience they have, what are the achievements, what are the educations, what education they have, what are their skills. And when planning the team, you will also find that in startups, you will have sometimes advisors, and sometimes mentors there. Uh, you can have, you know, say for example, you are into some tech, and you have uh, Ravindran as your advisor, or say Anil Agarwal as your advisor, Chairman Vedanta. How does it look? Uh, it cool. solves most of the problems of the investors. So management team has a very important role to play. Who is there in the board? Apart from the executors, whether you have people like Ravindran there, whether you have people like, you know, say, Kotek Mahendra sitting there. So if Kotek Mahendra is your advisor, a lot of problem has been solved. What strategic partners do you have? Fine, say for example, you have associated with a well-known vendor. That in a way solves most of the problems of the investors. The investor gets a feeling that if Anil Agarwal is associated with this startup, he might have seen some, you know, potential in this startup and then till now whatever the guy has told it's almost awesome and I think we can bet on this fine so the management need team need to be well done there will be an executive team who will be executing and then you can also have advisors and mentors and advisors mentors and strategic partners need to be very strategically chosen so that people once they see their names they know who you are and they know that who is backing you Okay. And then organizational structure. That need to be again clear. Last 5%, if you don't do this, again, 
things will not you know, work out. Financials. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a good, you know, you have a billion dollar idea, but then you cannot say that I am a tech guy, I have an idea, I don't know about finances. Come on, you are the founder, if you don't, you know, understand money, if you don't understand finance, you know, how you will manage, you know, the entire organization. Because whatever you do, you need money. Everything you cannot leave on somebody else's hand. So even if you don't know, you have to take the pain to understand. So investors would like to know that whether you have, you know, taken that pain to understand the financials. Fine. Even if you have not done, but whether you understand what has been done or not, that is very important. Now, what you need to understand here, average APC, we generally call it APC. I have written ARPC to make it revenue most prominent. Average revenue per customer. Because it is very difficult to identify how revenue from each product. So it's better average revenue per customer. And then CAC, cost of acquisition, customer acquisition cost. Fine. Total customers after first year, second year, and third year. Most of the startups, we initially concentrate on the growth of user users. So in first, second, and third years, how your customer base will increase, how your user base will increase. What will be the total profit in first, second, and third years? And then what is the valuation of the company, or rather what will be the valuation of the company three years from now? Not today. Today you, there will be no value. So three years from now, what is the value? So you need to know those numbers. And in financials, these are the five things, those are most important for any startup the capital expenditure and then the break even of capital expenditure break even capital expenditure is nothing but you can you know think of in terms of payback so you invest 1 crore you invest once year what is the payback how many years it will take to you know get 1 crore back so that is capex break even and then operation expenses fine how much you are spending and then operation break-even that is the most important so if somebody says which is most important capex break-even or opex break-even it is opex break-even which is the most important that is what is generally when you say break-even we actually refer to opex break-even how you know by what time you'll be recovering the entire fixed cost so opex break-even every startup rather every company tries to achieve the opex break-even as soon as possible the early you reach the opex break-even you'll make profits okay and then return on investment okay how much return the invest the, the startup is going to give in near future in initial years of course you'll not have profits but then most of the startups when you see the business plans you'll find that you know for some reason they will make profit from the first year itself but that is not going to happen so even if you know you put negative numbers for first, second, and third years, the investors are not going to mind. You know? But then people have this mental block. You see the you know typical B plan presentations, and you will find that the profits happen from the first year itself. I mean that's not at all true. That will never happen. Perform my income statement. I'll not talk about this in detail, but you need to you know, prepare the income statements in this way. And once you are through with this, then you ask funding. So you never say at this, you know, start that I need one CR or two CR. Once you have showcased the problem, once you have talked about, you know, the opportunity, once you have showcased the, you know, product, once you have introduced your company, talked about marketing and sales plan, talked about operational plan, talked about, you know, uh, financials, then you say that I need two CR as first round of funding. When you need, ask say 2 CR, fine, the investor says I will give you 1.5 CR, but then how will you use it? So you need to have, you know, uh, you need to be very ready with where these funds will be you know, used. Because initially what you will be doing, you will be spending. You know, initial round of funding, it is only cash burning, nothing else happens. So you need to burn the cash and you want money to burn the cash. Okay, how you will burn it? Maybe for product design development? Maybe for creating awareness, 
needing for further nurturing, customer acquisition, support, and human resources. Human resources is missing, but human resources, without human resources, I mean, you cannot run the show. So, at least 20-25% of the money that you borrow, or the investors, you know, put in there, will be, you know, will go in salaries and perks. Fine. So, these are some important steps that one needs to follow. And if you do that, you will have near perfect business life. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.